Thanks, um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th order suspending um, certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are meeting uh, remotely. The information on uh, the um, Zoom meeting is on our agenda. And uh, this meeting is um, open to the public via the, um, the Zoom meeting. So no in-person attendance at this time. All right, so first item on our agenda is to ratify all of our votes taken uh, in open session at our last meeting on um, May 17th. And that's because I was not sworn in. I hadn't had a chance to get in to see the town clerk. So um, I'll make a motion that we ratify any and all votes taken um, during open session on um, May 17th, 2021. Second. Have a second. Okay, second, uh, Mark. So uh, roll call vote. Mr. Russo? Yes. Mr. Trainer. Yes. Mrs. Joy, yes. Okay. All right, so let's get into appointments. Um, first one is Paul D'Angelo Jr. to planning board. So um, Anne, is this an annual appointment? No, this is, um, actually, I guess it would be for just this for coming the next year. election? Okay. I would prefer it to be for the remainder of his term, but I don't know that you can do that. I think it's till the next um, uh, yeah. elections. Okay. All right. So I'll make a motion that we appoint Paul D'Angelo Jr. to the planning board until um, the next election. Do you know the date, Liz? You're muted, Liz. I believe it's May 18th. Um, I'm pulling it up right now. Um, nope, I lied. May 21st. Okay, until May 21st, 2021. 2022. Uh, 2022. 2022. Thanks, Liz. 2022. So is that the same with all of these appointments, Liz, that they're the first two? Well, are right? The first two I would do through um, May 21st, 2022. Okay, and then um, I'll make a motion that we appoint Dave Batchelor to the Board of Assessors until May 21st, 2022. Do we have a second? Second. All right, uh, any discussion? All right, hearing none, uh, roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Trainer. Yes. Mr. Russo. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Joy, yes. Okay. So uh, then we've got uh, Nathaniel L. Stone is a full-time police officer until um, June 30th, 2022, Liz, for the fiscal year? Yes, correct. Okay. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Um, any discussion? All right. Roll call vote. Um, Mr. Trainer. Yes. And Mr. Russo. Yes. All right, Mrs. Joy, yes. Okay, all right, perfect. So we got uh, the appointments taken care of. So Anne, like you are good Anne. to go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Christine, did you, Bye, actually do, did you actually do the roll call vote for Paul? Yes. Yes, we did and roll call vote for both together. of those. We did them together. Okay. Don't put a spanner in the works, John. Well, I'm, I'm leaving. Trying to prevent the spanner. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So next item on the agenda is to point the treasurer collector, Christine Kelly, as the custodian of tax possession properties. And I did print out the um, the motion that council had written for us. Let me just find it. I, I have it if you don't. Yeah. Do you want to make the motion, Mark? Sure. Uh, Let's see. So as provided under Mass General Law Chapter 60, Section 77B, I hereby move to appoint Christine Kelly, town treasurer collector as possession custodian who shall have the care, custody, management and control of all property acquired by foreclosure, um, deed in lieu of foreclosure or by treasurer's deed for unpaid taxes. And is that an open ended appointment? It's open ended. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's just for her as long as she's in that position. As long as she's in that position. Exactly. If it changed, we pick somebody else. Okay. I'll second the motion. Um, roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Trainer. Yes. And Mr. Russo. Yes. And Mrs. Joy. Yes. Okay. 
All right, so uh, our next item on the agenda is to appoint BOS members to serve as um, fiscal year 22 advisory board representative to Plymouth County. I'm currently serving on this um, committee, but if somebody else is interested, they're more than uh, welcome to, to take it. Um, I, oh, thank you. I, 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 <laughs> no, thank you. I, if it were, if you are looking to lighten your load, I'd be willing to take it on. If you're content being in the position, I'd be actually equally glad, even more glad for you to continue. So totally up to you. It's not a heavy lift. So um, we typically meet um, maybe quarterly. So I don't have a problem continuing with this. Okay. All right, so does someone want to make a motion to appoint me to serve as the advisory board representative to Plymouth County? Um, I so move. Okay, all right, and- um, I'll, I'll second. Oh, thank you, John. All right, so John seconded, and roll call vote, Mr. Trainer. Yes. And uh, Mr. Russo? Yes. All right, Mrs. Joy, yes. All right, so that one's all set. All right, so um, next item on the agenda is reappointments for fiscal year 2022. These are the paid town employees that are appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Did you guys get a chance to look at the list? Yes. All right, um, any questions or concerns? No. No. All right. No. I was just looking for a clarification on um, Madeline Pompey. Is she a police department clerk? No, she's the library clerk. That, library. Uh, yeah. She's also the planning board clerk. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. Um, does someone want to make a motion to um, make the uh, ju Just one uh, question to Liz. Liz, uh, one question to Liz. Yep, sure. Uh, the library director, does that have to be on here? No, the trustees would have already taken care of that. And okay. I, he went and got sworn in. So they okay. did so they would have to do that. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, I'll read through the list for the record. So um, I'll make a motion that we appoint the following people to uh, the position that I will indicate until June 30th, 2022. And first is Brian Vasa, conservation agent. Kathy Canizo, she's the administrative assistant. Um, she's the building department, right, Liz? That's Kathy. Okay, Allison Mary, the administrative assessor. Hello? Yes. Ken Thompson, yeah. the zoning enforcement officer. Tom Milius, building commissioner. William Kelly Jr., assistant building inspector. Scott R. Peterson, wiring inspector alternate. Douglas Hawthorne Jr., Plumbing and Gas Inspector, Brigitte Martins, Administrative Assistant to the Board of Selectmen, Colleen Thompson, Director of Elder Services, James Mustakeros, Senior Aide, Tara Shaw, Assistant Treasurer Collector, Steve Saro, Custodian and Transfer Station, Rob Ferlot, Highway Superintendent, Benjamin Saro, Highway Working Foreman, Ronald Dillette Jr., Highway Laborer, Patrick Colrain, Highway Laborer, Daryl Fernald, Highway Laborer Mower, Steve Brack, Highway Laborer Mower, Art, Art Moran Jr., Transfer Station, John Walker, Transfer Station, James McWigan, Transfer Station, Harry Weichel, Transfer Station, Colleen Morin, Highway Administrative Assistant, Leanne Cashman, Police Administrative Assistant, um, all of the police officers that we have hired within uh, this year, and uh, Madeline Pompey as the clerk to the library and planning board. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All right. Um, roll call vote, Mr. Russo? Yes. All right. Mr. Trainer? Yes. Mrs. Joy? Yes. All right. So those are the annual um, paid uh, town employees that are appointed by the Board of Selectmen. So the next item on our agenda is to vote to consider amending selected BOS operating principle number 12, which is whenever possible and is a courtesy to the public open session BOS meetings will be recorded and posted. The minutes of the meeting shall remain the official record of the proceedings. So John, you had asked us. Um, uh, yes, this came up uh, this. previously um, and it pertains to what we call the working meetings. Uh, we record and we post on Area 58 and YouTube all the uh, general open meetings. 
But when we designate something a working meeting, even though it's an open meeting, we have elected not to record or post it. I agree that the uh, minutes, the written minutes are the official document, but I think uh, we owe it to our citizens, to our residents to post all meetings, open meetings. It doesn't pertain obviously to executive sessions. Uh, there's a couple of things I think partly, while it's not legally required, the spirit of the law is that all meetings be open if they're so, so attained. Openness, transparency. I think it also allows for uh, citizens, especially the seniors who, or anybody who has disability, because it's not easy for them to come into our meetings once we're back in uh, physical session in the townhouse. And, and then the other issue becomes who decides it's a working meeting? I mean, do, do we just say, well, this is a working meeting, so we don't want to record it. Um, that's a little uh, ambiguous. And I guess, uh, you know, if, we, if we're going to do that, then we probably should at least have a reporter present too so that there's a, an additional way of reporting out to our, uh, to our residents. So that's why I think we should move forward and uh, just agree that we'll post uh, all open meetings. Well, I think we have been, we posted, John, it's the recording that's um, yes. at issue. So all yes. of the meetings are posted, all the agendas are posted. Um, so they're an, a meeting that's open to the public. Um, my only concern is, you know, we've done this so few times. We've done this. I asked Liz um, how, since she has started, how many we have had, and we've had three. So I don't think it's something that we abuse, but um, I think sometimes that, um, we need, it's in the best interest, I think, of um, employees and the town to, um, to have working meetings. And particularly if we've got an individual who requires coaching or, um, you know, if, if there's situations that come up, I certainly don't want to, um, to embarrass people, but it wouldn't meet the threshold for executive session. But um, we still need to have some discussions with um, employees. Um, I just think that it's not something that we've abused. I think we need to be um, cognizant of making this decision to not record. And um, I think if we continue to do that, that um, it's something that um, would make sense to, to not record it. But just the, the working meetings and, um, and maybe we do need to define uh, better what, um, what is a working meeting. And I, um, I, I tend to agree. I agree. I'm totally in favor of openness and transparency. And I think we do a very good job of that, of posting the meetings of opportunities for citizens to uh, uh, know that there is a meeting uh, with Zoom. They've been able to tune in when that isn't there anymore. There is the opportunity to come to the meetings. Um, we've had very few uh, working meetings. I think we've been fastidious in not overusing them. I think there's an occasional time that it's nice to have the opportunity to kind of brainstorm without um, uh, potentially what we're thinking about or uh, thinking through contingencies being taken out of context. Um, I, in, in looking at this and wondering um, how to craft a uh, uh, this principle, um, I think I came up with pretty simple language that defines a, a working meeting um, as a posted session open to the public called to informally discuss in depth a topic or topics for possible future action. And that's the way we've always used this in the past. We've never taken action at the meeting, but used it to kind of noodle ideas. And almost always it's been to noodle one topic a little, um, see where we get to, then with the possibility of bringing it into a, a, another open meeting that is recorded. So I think we use the working meetings um, uh, very rarely, but I think it serves a really strong and useful function. And, and so I'd hate to lose the opportunity or the option of defining an open meeting and, uh, or designating an open meeting um, 
uh, um, and using it in the rare times that we do. So, well, I hear what you say, but uh, no matter how you spin it, they are open meetings. And we've made the differentiation that uh, somehow, because we say it's a working meeting, it shouldn't be recorded. Uh, I'm not going to flog this horse. We've been through this before, but um, I think it's wrong. So. I agree. Okay, thanks, Howard. Two times, twice. I agree. All right. So, um, Mark, would you come up with some language that defines kind of the scope of a working meeting? Or do you want to just um, yeah. leave it? I, I, I have done that, um, and I, uh, I pass that on, on to Liz. I don't, can you screen share that, Liz, or is that a... Uh... Rather than vote on this tonight, why don't we uh, have Liz circulate what you wrote and mm -hmm. give us a chance to just where did Smith it? Yeah, um, that sounds great. That's a really I, good suggestion. I, I, offered, I offered two things to Liz. One was to simply add at the beginning of that sentence, with the exception of working meetings, and then whenever possible, and as a courtesy, all meetings are recorded. And then the second version was with the exception of a working meeting, and then parentheses define very clearly what an open meeting was in the language I just used. But um, I, I, I'm glad... I, um, I'm glad that everyone will take a look at it and maybe we can put this to rest one way or another at the next meeting. All right, so let's hold that one and we'll um, bring it back for the next meeting. All right. Um, and then we've got adoption of policy relative to tangible supply disposition. So Liz had sent us a document uh, kind of laying out creating the policy. Did you guys get a chance to read the document? I thought it was well written and uh, it looked good. All right, how about you, Mark? I'm fine. All right, my only suggestion was, um, I think that uh, in the number three, that it needs to say serving as chief procurement officer and then in parentheses CPO, and then every other time that it says chief uh, procurement officer, it's CPO instead. Okay. Because one time it did say CPO, but it had never called out the um, the abbreviation. Okay. I thought it looked great. I'll make that change. All right. Are you guys okay with making that change where it just... Um... Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. So um, how about a motion to accept the disposal of surplus property policy um, as amended? So moved. Oh, okay, so moved by John, and um, I'll second the motion. Roll call vote, Mr. Trainer. Yes. All right, uh, Mr. Russo. Yes. And Mrs. Joy, yes. Okay, so um, next item on our agenda is Ride to School Day request, and that's June 11th, 2021. Normally, we put this under correspondence, but just where it involves um, significantly more children than it has in the past. Uh, we thought that it made sense to put it on the main part of the agenda. Um, it's our understanding that Amy Hempel and Pays have been in touch with five police and they are fully on board with this. They are going to have sufficient manpower. Um, the police department has been in touch with Highway, so they'll make sure that everybody makes it to the destination safely, um, but they are in favor of it. So it would be on Friday, June 11th, um, bike to school day and um, they said up to 200 people um, you know that's an estimate of course but we have sufficient manpower to handle it so we've been told from both fire and police chief is there a window on this uh, Elizabeth that they have to do it within a certain hour it's at 7 a.m. is the scheduled time uh, okay. I mean, it's not going to go beyond. It's not like an all-day event yeah. or anything. Okay. Okay. It's in the morning. Yeah. Well, they'll have to ride home. <laughs> <laughs> Last year's was very well done. Okay. All right. So are they all meeting at the townhouse or are kids just riding from their homes? Old townhouse, I believe, aren't they? Yeah, the Historical Society parking lot. Okay. Um, so it's center, some of Main Street, and um, both public safety departments are going to have 
manpower deployed and Sergeant Hoffman is taking the lead on this. So, so Liz, is that the to and from? So when the school kids get out of school, they're going to be riding back to the historical society or are they going home? No, they go home. Okay. Typically it's just the ride to school and then the parents sort out the ride home, whether they come and pick the kids up in the bikes or however, or they come back meet the kids and ride home separately. Right. John, is that a full day or is it a half a day? Uh, I would think it's a full day. Okay. I, I don't believe we would have a half day. It, it's just, it's just the, it's simply the ride to school. And okay. of course this being the year that it's been, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of eagerness to uh, be part of it. Last year, they streamed by my house when they were after school. It was fun to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could sit out there with your lawn chair. You've got uh, yeah. the best seat. With a drink. <laughs> with a drink. There you go. A little less of an issue in the afternoon um, because you're not, you're not coinciding with uh, people trying to get to work. So, um, but usually it's up, to, it's up to the individual parents to sort out the, the ride home. Great. All right, so um, does someone want to make a motion that we um, approve the ride to school day? Uh, so moved. Okay, moved second. by Mark and second by John. Okay, uh, roll call, Mr. Trainer. Yes. Yes, Mr. Russo. Yes. And Mrs. Joy, yes, awesome. Sounds like fun. <laughs> All right, so um, now we've got town-owned land identified for potential affordable age-qualified housing opportunities. So Liz or John, do you want to take the lead on this one? Um, sure. So um, John Wilhelmson, John Trainer, the fire chief, and I went out and looked at five different town-owned parcels um, and with an mindset to identify at least one of those that we might want to present to Habitat for Humanity for the potential of an affordable age qualified um, housing project. In looking at those five parcels, um, the one that rose to the top is the one that's located off of Brook Street, um, which I sent you that parcel ID earlier today. Um, it's just a hair over two acres in size. And I checked today with the assessor's office and the building department, and there are no foreseeable issues to building a house on that land. Um, obviously, you know, a conservation commission approval might be in order or something to that effect, but um, it has the adequate amount of frontage and, and everything else. So nobody could really see an issue on the town side of things. Um, so if it's okay with this board, and you're so inclined to vote, then I would go back to Habitat with the parcel information and see what the next steps are. If they wanna do a site visit or, you know, if it's adequate information for them to kind of look at how they might wanna proceed. Um, I think in our last discussion with Habitat, if I'm not mistaken, they had mentioned how they typically do like two level single family homes as kind of their typical project, but they were going to check and see with some of their other branches and check out like other projects that they've done to find something that might be a bit more um, friendly for the elderly population, like something single level, um, a little bit more simple in design and something that possibly we could get two units um, out of it. So I think that would be kind of the natural progression of the discussion. Um, but the first step is identifying a parcel for them to take, take a look at. I did take a look at uh, Habitat for Humanity for Cape Cod, and they do uh, single level uh, housing. And they seem to have a set plan. 80% oh, of what I saw was one, the same plan. Uh, and just to continue this, the reason I like this lot is one, it's on Old Brook Street, which is as you're going Brook Street to Kingston, mm -hmm. it's at where you enter the sand and gravel and i think that would be a very hard lot for the town to sell i mean i don't think we even knew it was there and it it should perk you got a sand and gravel company there i can't imagine it won't perk so i i think it's a it's a win-win any john, thoughts john uh, yeah, I mean, so we talked about it at Town Properties. Um, this one and the um, lot on the top of Main Street, uh, up by 106, were the two that 
we thought made sense. And I don't think we have a preference one way or the other. I think John's comments are correct that there's there's some benefit to that to that lot. Um, I think we we are hopeful that we can kind of work with Habitat to you know encourage their design and and do. I mean, it's probably a little outside of their comfort zone because they typically build build a single family home. But certainly, if we are able to get you know two units into into something like that it would that would be a greater benefit and and it may be and the other thing is is they don't need to be big units i mean that that's sort of the the point is you you want sort of a reasonable size pretty open floor plan one level so that you make it easy to care for uh and mm -hmm. and so this this is sort of i think an opportunity of for them not just for plimpton but for for what else they do around the different communities Yes. And then the, the I think the last piece of it is is I think that's a it's actually it looks to be quite a beautiful lot. I yeah, mean, it, it is. That's some nice mature uh, hardwood uh, trees on there. A few pines sprinkled in, but I, I think cleared properly, it would be really a beautiful setting. And also able to get out on that road without you know an enormous amount of traffic, which you would have more of a challenge on Main Street. I think also it gives us a chance to work with Habitat for Humanity. And just, you know, feel comfortable because we do want to move forward at some point on senior citizen housing on a on a bigger venue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this opportunity to uh, give it a try. And I, I their model seems to be a good one and feels like it would fit in Plumpton. Um, uh, just to be clear, though, I want to make sure I understand what we'd be voting on tonight is that we have identified this property as a potential site and a site that we'd like to show them. Um, nothing more than that. No further right. commitment at this point. No. Liz, are we required to can we just donate it to them or are we required to put out an RFP? We would need to look at that and talk with council. Um, chapter 30, I believe it's section six, six or 16, um, it's escaping me right now, governs um, disposition of town owned land. Mm -hmm. We'd want to make sure that if we were going the donation route, that we checked all the boxes um, in terms of that process. Um, disposition of town owned land in any form. Um, is a slightly different procurement process than everything else. So we would need to work with council on that to make sure, um, you know, that everything was in compliance in that sense. But um, I would imagine that we do it by way of a donation or um, almost like a partnership agreement of sorts um, where we were involved and they were involved. Um, I'm sure that they do it all the time, obviously. So yeah. my guess is that their council, um, the quickest route would be if they did like the parcel for to put them in touch with our council um, and kind of get the ball rolling on that and see what a draft agreement might look like or the easiest way. I, I, would, I would suggest that regardless of how it's done, that anything that gives us a little bit more of a say at the table as to what they're doing and how they're doing it um, would probably be beneficial. Uh, not, in the end, we want them to, to, to build it and do it the right way because we're not, we're not house builders here. But, um, you know, I think, I think we want this to be successful. We want it to be, you know, an attractive building and something that would be really nice for, you know, some of our seniors to be able to call their home. Um, so if, if we have that ability as we're, donating the land and however that works to, to have a, a proper seat at the table, both, you know, from a cooperation standpoint, but also almost contractually, then that would be, that would be ideal. I, I think John brings up an important point. Um, if you ask me, my sort of vision for it would be that the town properties committee would have that seat at the table, just in terms of aesthetics, design, um, that sort of piece. So I think whatever agreement we came up with, we don't want it to be so quick that it's just, oh, okay, you know, we've donated the property to them and now they just take off and run with it and we're no longer involved in the process. I think having that partnership agreement um, and maybe we kind of pass the baton fully off to them at the end of the project and now it's theirs to like, own and operate and get that next transition to the next homeowners um, and that sort of thing. But 
I think as far as design and construction, we would want some sort of a seat at the table, like John has indicated. And I feel like our town properties committee would be the logical kind of home for that, um, at least as far as the construction and design piece. Makes sense. I would second that. Mm -hmm. In our housing production plan, uh, we were very cognizant of that um, while we created it. And um, we did give uh, a preference to uh, locals with the um, adoption of affordable housing. And we did include provisions for um, that it really needed to, um, to fit into the town's character. So it does make perfect sense that, um, that the town properties committee would, um, would work with um, whoever is um, creating the um, age restricted affordable housing on the property to make sure that um, that that happens. All right, so do we want to make a motion to- Christine Howard seems- Oh, Howard, go ahead. Up. Howard, you have to unmute, sir. Uh, does the zoning allow two houses on that? It, two families. So two it's family. to do a single house. Hmm? It would be a two family, one, one structure. All right. Yeah, duplex. Yeah. Or you could do a friendly 40B and put two houses on it. Mm -hmm. Yep, you could do that too. Okay. Are you good with this, Howard? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think <laughs> I, I view like the town of Plymouth, it was 4.5 a percent uh, 20 years ago, and it's 4.5 percent today. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where we are the last time I checked, but uh, uh, I don't know where we are in terms of meeting the 10 percent, but I suspect we're a few not over away. five. No, we're not over yeah. five. I, and no. we haven't made a lot of progress. Progress, no. yes. Yeah. No, not <laughs> since um, the woodlands. So um, I guess is there a a bigger impact that can be made someplace uh, uh, to get that uh, onus off the town. Um, you know, two at a time, uh, what are we, 900 dwellings now? Yeah. So, About that, yeah. So you need 90 affordable units. And if you're under four, that's uh, 36 or something. So you're a long way from home. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think but, I think it will be incredibly hard for us to ever make that number. Yeah, that said, I do too. Jeff. This is more about trying to help seniors, and even if it's two units at a time, it's at least two units that we didn't have before. Lower the tax rate. You want to help us out? Lower <laughs> the taxes. Throw away five cruises. Yeah, that would help. That's my two cents. Put them on bikes. Huh? Yeah, put them on bikes. Works for me. Uh, that could be difficult in the winter, but yeah. Uh, oh. yeah, then they could walk, I suppose. Can I ask a, just mm -hmm. one more question, and I mm -hmm. won't bother you. Uh, when are you going to discuss the traffic study? It's been like a fine wine here. And uh, is there ever going to be a discussion? Do you ever plan to? involve the people who are affected by it and uh, and when i thought rumor was it was going to happen tonight and mm -hmm. people from but i tried twice to call your office and twice have gotten no response so uh, the um so the traffic study was conducted and um kind of the short answer to it is that Based on mass highway and federal highway standards, um, typically roadway paintings and markings of that kind um, are not really an accepted practice. They prefer that for those safety zones that they're implemented by way of signage only. Um, <laughs> our highway department is in the process currently of getting compliant signage ordered and put up. He had put some signage up um, but then these other regulations were brought to the highway department's attention. So they're getting the proper signage. Um, in the meantime, I'm behind the scenes trying to find out if the 
is an actual rule or policy or law against painting roadway markings or if it's more of a suggestion. Um, and then as soon as we know that, hopefully we can move forward and paint some markings on the road. I think that would be the desired outcome. Mm -hmm slow people down in that area. Um, the regional planning agency was also gonna look at some other potential traffic calming measures in both those safety zones for us. And then I believe at a future meeting, um, we are gonna pursue getting their assistance on walking us through how we might be yeah. able to address the heavy truck traffic situation. So um, more to come on that. Um, I, I might just follow up. I, we're very yeah. disappointed to hear from Old Colony Planning yeah. Council that well, I could have told you. Well, I, um, I, and I, I've asked Liz and want to keep pursuing further painting. I painting that road is the is incredibly cost effective way of bringing attention. And before we end up with something uh, much more ornate. Um, I, I would like to pursue this further. I mean, if there are ordinances that don't allow it, fine. Um, equally, um, there are, there, it does look like I still believe that we could limit truck traffic on um, certain secondary roads, non-route number roads in town, and we're continuing to keep a look at that too. Um, it is really disappointing. I had every expectation that we could splash a lot of white paint and bring very clear attention to the two speed zones. And the fact that uh, we haven't been able to get any help or recommendations is frustrating as all get. I can't imagine what those radar directed lights like the one on 106 cost, but that would be a good start. So at least they know what they're doing. What, what happens here? is nobody knows where 20 ends and something else begins. So the minute they hit my corner, it's boom, straight away. Let's go. And probably two out of three cars never stop. And through all these discussions, and then I'll shut up, I've never once heard about enforcement. You know, I go by the town hall, I see that sign up there by the cemetery, you know, slow down, town meeting, whatever. Why isn't that here? The last time I saw it was buried in a closet at the police station. You know, when Bob Costa was here, it was out here. You know, I, 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 where does enforcement fit in this? When we came to town, this place had a reputation they were on the talk shows in Boston. You don't go through Plimpton fast. That's lost, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether it went out with a dishwater or with freighters or whatever. But I, ask the fire chief how many times he goes to resuscitate my poor diabetic friend across the street. They have to back out into a blind corner. As I say, I it cost me another three or $400 a year in insurance because of the two accidents that I've had here. And it cost me a row of trees and it cost me another blister on the big tree in, in the last two years. So, uh, you know, I don't care what, <laughs> I don't care what the state says. I'm sick of what the state says, okay? Yeah. So I'll end it at that, but, uh, um, I'd invite you. In fact, I'd set up a bunch of chairs, three chairs. I've got some beautiful silver mint julep cups, and I can you can sit here. If they don't come up on the lawn like they have one day on my way to a selectman's meeting, I turned around and there was a motorcycle in my front yard. Uh, you'd be welcome to sit. Maybe they could bring Jersey barriers up, and uh, and you can watch them fly by. Sunday it's Le Mans here. Okay. So um, I'll end it at that. I thought there was going to be some discussion with those people because they didn't talk to anybody. Right. And no. I knew we were in trouble because they don't give a damn. And I can tell you, go to the assessor's office and go to the appeals board in Boston and they don't give a damn whether your life is infected by or affected by traffic. It, it, so you're the only people that I know of, aside of the chief and, and those uh, seven or eight cruises or whatever the hell we have uh, that uh, should be given a damn at this point. With that, I'll well, shut up. 
We'll keep plugging away at it, Howard. Yeah. Right. I, I, I get your frustration. Yeah. I think we're well, pretty frustrated too. Cheaper to buy a for sale sign. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Howard. Yeah, I believe Thanks, the Howard. painting is just a um, a recommendation. Yeah. We can paint. I don't Wally, think there's going to be anything like against that. Yeah. And I then think, um, we can talk to the chief about enforcement. Absolutely. Yes, please do. Mm -hmm. You know, my neighbor's picks her child, her her grandchild up off the bus. She was so frustrated, thinking they were going to get killed, that she'd call the police. They came twice, and then they went away. That stopped nothing. Okay, mm -hmm. that satisfied an initial interest on her part, but did nothing to prevent her granddaughter from getting killed. So it's, it is a matter of not even policy, but of, of conditioning people that we mean business in this town and we're not gonna have it, okay? I, I never, I read the paper, the citations, I very seldom see anything up here. And it, this they could pay the damn budget. Uh, at 20 miles an hour, you know, somebody going through at 30, that's a five thousand dollar bill. So, OK, I've spoken. We're working on it, Howard. Yes. Yeah. So it, it probably will be on um, an upcoming agenda because we do need to get um, yeah. this squared away as to um, to what the plan is. So I think it will be after Liz determines whether or not there's anything that legally prevents us from painting the roads. And yeah. But I think those those radar um, signs that detect and display the speed. But again, understanding where 20 ends here, because the minute they hit here, well, it starts the minute they get past the lower corner, they're on their way to 40 or 50 miles an hour. And I understood that that because it the, the other sign coming the other way is is 300 feet down the the street on the other side of the road. So we get all the acceleration, the neighbors get it all. And um, so without some kind of marking, still 20 miles an hour or whatever, um, we're just gonna be plagued. So Liz, I would offer a suggestion that KP has a wonderful um, double-sided sheet on land acquisition. If you don't have it, ask, ask them to send it to you. And it's got all the, steps and disposition and acquisition can be very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Ask All right. for the rest of them while you're at it. Thank, bye. Thanks, Howard. Yeah, bye -bye. All right. Um, with um, back to the um, disposal of surplus property, do we need to make a, uh, or do we need to vote on the form, Liz, or can, is it just kind of um, a given? No, the form, the form is more internal. It was just, okay. Perfect. I was looking for the vote. Okay, great. All right, so um, we are posted for 6.30 um, executive session. Um, I don't know if, if we have um, time to get much more done before we move to that. Um, John, did you have anything you wanted to um, report on so that you didn't have to come back? No, nope, we're good. Um, I would just notice if you're up at Derby Street, they painted all over the roads up there. So I don't think, I think that's a bunch of hooey. And I think if we put more signs up, no one's going to see them. There's enough signs as it is. Put two more, three more up, it becomes a blur of signs. Yep. So I'm, I'm as, as long as it's not something that we're prohibited from doing, I, I think we should put a can of paint out in the brush and let's go. Yep, I agree. <laughs> because it's, you know, and it, especially for like the bike lanes, they're doing all this painting and, and it's effective to sort of try and show people where you're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, this something else has to happen because it doesn't work on Ring Road either. I, I ask people doing, 40 around the corner regularly, even after we put the 20 mile an hour signs up. So, and 20 is slow, but again, we're hoping for something closer and 40 is not close, so. Okay, all right, so more to come. Good. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right, so um, Liz, uh, do you have any correspondence or anything we can do for the minute until? Sure, sure, and I think, so they'll be joining us on here for the executives. We may have a few extra minutes until they call in. Great. Um, so as far as the meetings and in-person versus remote, um, everybody's still waiting to hear about the pending legislation. Um, the governor did file legislation uh, that would 
among many other things, it would extend um, the relaxation of the open meeting law provisions and would allow for full remote meetings at least through September 1st. Um, but we're still waiting to find out if that gets approved or not. Um, and that will kind of dictate what happens with all of these meetings moving forward after June 15th. Um, so more to come on that. Um, I also received the information from council as far as, say if we do go back to in-person um, and the legislation doesn't pass, as far as um, if you wanted to adopt that remote provision, um, that wouldn't allow for fully remote meetings, but it would make it so less than a quorum. Um, so in your case, one board member um, could be remote because you need at least a quorum um, physically present at the meeting location, including whoever's chairing the meeting. Um, but you could rotate around who was chairing and all of that. So I think that's something that we might want to look into um, more just for our own use later on. Um, but hopefully I have something to report to everybody next week if that legislation passes or not, and that'll kind of dictate what happens with these remote meetings. Um, and that was really it, um, working on some green communities projects, um, trying to get final funding figured out for a lot of the different grants and everything that are closing out towards the end of the fiscal year. And we're still waiting on a considerable amount of money and reimbursements from the County CARES program, um, but they are working hard on it and going as fast as they can going through all the submissions. So um, we should be in okay shape there. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as my update and correspondence. Thanks, Liz. Um, at the Plymouth County meeting, they indicated that we had um, already maxed out on our CARES. I wonder if that- We have as far as our submissions, um, but they've only reimbursed us for a fraction of the submissions. We have a whole spreadsheet. Um, we're right. on two checks from them now. They approved checks on April 29th and another one on May 13th, but we still haven't received those yet. Um, and then we have more pending submissions, a few from December that they haven't approved yet, and then a whole bunch from 2021 calendar year that haven't been looked at yet. Great. Okay. Thanks, Liz. You're Did welcome. you need us to take any action on the town-owned land identified for potential affordable? Do we need to take a vote on that or... I think maybe at this stage we could hold off on the vote um, based on the discussion. I'll send that information to Habitat and I'll also find out from council, uh, you know, how an agreement might look, how the process might go, and then we can go from there. Maybe that's better so that it's a little less formal and we're not, I don't know. Locking ourselves in? Locking okay. Locking ourselves in just yet. Okay, John and Mark, are you guys okay with um, doing that, not taking any official action? Um, I think that's the right course of action. Okay, yep, great. Fine. Okay, all right. So I see we've got the Board of Assessors with us. Um, I can tell you that we don't have the minutes from 517, so we're going to hold those until next time. So we've pretty much completed um, all of our open session um, business, which is perfect timing. So, um, is there anything else um, that uh, we needed to cover in open session before going into executive session? Okay. All right, so I'll make a motion that um, we go into executive session uh, with the, um, the Board of Assessors for um, purpose six to consider the purchase exchange lease or value of real property in conjunction with the Board of Assessors